Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Biblio Fitness. Hope everyone's had or is going to have a great day. Uh, make some glorious gains. So today, I did want to talk about a recent subject brought up in um, the dawn of day. Of course, um, I feel like I'm taking forever finishing the book, but it's totally worth it. And that is our addiction to intoxicating feelings how you know he says uh, a nation is constantly deceived because we are always looking for someone to deceive us we are always looking for this escape we are always looking for this avenue or this mechanism as to which we can feel that we have power and we have control over our lives or we have conquered we have uh, achieve magnificence and splendor and glory and and mystery you know and, and something beyond the dull and gray world around us that is just like you know and the constant partner that is suffering and Nietzsche goes on to make the observation that that is why a lot of us don't pay attention to experts and specialists but we do pay to popes and princes and 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 princely houses and grand grand buildings and these and these larger than life the, the, this bigger than you feeling that you get right this escape and um something else uh, and, and a feeling of become of going outside of yourself i guess you could say right and you know this is a snack this is a trap that we constantly fall for you know this constant wanting to f have those power those feelings of power and I feel like that is really one of the biggest falls because we look to vindicate and and satisfy those sort of feelings and, and that craving through means of other individuals because we no longer have the conviction to do it ourselves. And since now we are moral creatures, um, nonviolent, we have to seek that justification of power through other means, you know, uh, re refusing dominance hierarchy and calling that backwards or refusing and rejecting the laws of nature and the laws of hierarchy and, and all this other stuff that, you know, are very difficult pills to swallow, but it's aspects of reality that we just constantly escape from. And in those constant, and, and we're just, a lot of us are just seeking momentary respite, you know, fighting and killing for glory and for freedom and for war and for all these great banners of altruism that we now have to pay lip service to when, when, whenever we want to commit an act or whenever we want to construct a plan. It always has to be whitewashed with that sort of uh, uh, rhetoric in mind. And even, you could do that even with conquerors and, and, and leaders. And, and that's also another observation that Nietzsche makes is that how they use the frustrations and our needs and our wants like very far-sighted individuals and use it for their own immoral means, right? And like I said, there's that avenue of separation, the greats. And, you know, there is that separation of the lower class of people and how we want, how we ourselves define that feeling of power and that, and that satiation and how we get that intoxicating feeling. Um, aside from, you know, because I was just listening to a podcast about Philip II of Macedon and Alexander the Great. And how they didn't, they weren't able to seem weak, and how they had to constantly fight. And they were not very nice individuals because of the world around them, but they wanted to see glory and power through very violent means. Right? And war is truly progress. You know, if you don't, if you don't have the military advantage over your enemies, you're not going to be able to progress. You're not going to be able to be in the moral high standing of it all. You're not going to be able to dictate how things are run you know to victors goes the spoils at the end of the day but since our decrepit mindset no longer is able to, to perform those sort of things uh, we now turn away from our past with utter revulsion when we run into those particular truths about our nature we seek you know the, the that feeling of power and triumph through other means through religious and philosophical means through idealism you know, through saying that we're in the right and we're good because we're born for that. You know, I'm a sufferer, therefore I deserve pity or I deserve salvation because I was like, you know, a lot of stuff that we feel like we have a right to, a right, you know, like we have this pompous 
delusional concept that you know just because I'm a human being I deserve these certain things when in reality that's not the case you know in reality you have to kind of take what you want you know a lot of this stuff is given to you but could be taken away at any time and that's a reality we had to face and and not you know turn you know and not allow these traps to ensnare us all the time you know us us pe like us common people for the most part, are so desperate for that intoxicated feeling, you know, that that moment, that momentary respite from the woes and the sufferings of the world, and 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 it's it's especially now, you know, you know, there has to be a reason that being drunk and being on drugs is such a mainstream mainstream is such an accepted thing to do now, you know, to get drunk with your friends is a way to hang out and have a good time, and it's just like why. Why is that so ingratiated, that that feeling, that running away from life and suffering, you know? I mean, it also, I, I guess it can be attributed to the fact that we are just becoming more and more weak, right? We can't handle suffering and pain as much as we used to, as much as back in ancient civilizations, you know, we just got more decrepit. And the question really has to be brought, or, or, or when, you know, when are we going to start criticizing the, the, the supposed respites of the suffering to begin with you know how much are we really paying for by these supposed promises you know we're constantly killing and fighting each other for the aims of someone else you know they're just throwing moral valuations and rhetoric on your face because you want to believe these things you want to believe you're a part of something more you want to believe you're in the right and if you got to kill, murder, you know, we are willing to do those abhorrent things. We just want the appropriate excuse. You know, cause, you know, that's why it's always been comical to me when I see nations villainize other nations or other eras of other nations and things of that nature. Because, you know, you've also committed egregious acts. You know, you just say it's freedom. You just say it's for, uh, like uh, for the appropriate reasons. And, but you're committed the same acts, you know. At the, it, we're just so focused on attention and in the intention we are deceived constantly because we want to believe that our intentions are pure so we could look at ourselves in a mirror and be proud of ourselves and but th this is really one of the most fundamental uh traps in which we get we get caught up in all the all the time you know our desperate clamoring to belong into these sort of groups but allowing others to dictate the terms for us you know, that to be good and to be in the right and even the feelings of good and, and feeling happy and feeling fulfilled are dictated for us. You know, it's very difficult to even un begin to understand that, that we have subjugated ourselves to, and think to think that we've won. You know, accept defeat but thinking that you've gained freedom. Um, it's the justification for your lack of volition a lot of the times, right? I was having this conversation with a friend making an excuse to, you know, why people don't work out, for example. And I know there's exigent circumstances that sometimes don't allow people to perform in physical activities and, and things of that nature. Like, I'm not going to dive into that. But I'm just talking about for the average, the, the mean, the average person, there really is no excuse, right? Like, I was just telling, you know, it is out of your own volition and you're just creating these excuses in your head to vindicate your own cowardice. Or your own laziness. You just don't want to accept the fact that you're lazy. You're just coming up with these excuses. And these are the same. You know, you could take this sort of train, uh, this sort of methodology of thought, and and, ex and and extrapolate it onto many different more more important aspects. Why do we believe in these religions? Why do we believe these false promises of other individuals? Because it satiates a lot of these. Uh, 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 flaws or these characteristic you know the, the these characteristic flaws that we need to that 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 people use to control us and to lie to us and tell us that they're in the right and you have to follow our way and this is what's going to lead you to true happiness and that and and you know salvation and these rapturous feelings and that you're going to experience that coming this way and you're going to be rewarded for that reward will be those feelings of exaltation those feelings of you know that semblance or that taste of this metaphysical world this indescribable world and that's what we're chasing for all the time 
you know, the, these vindication of such selfish uh, desires. And, and most of the time that does sound very pessimistic and cynical. But it really is the case, you know. And we allow, you know, and in our desperation we keep following and dying for the same banners from the same people. You know, I feel like they don't waste their time with such trifles. But we seem to, since we are not in so much control literally right we're not we're not we don't control as much as we would like we don't we have to find other ways to vindicate and to satiate that desperation um and that is a big advantage for a lot of people to use against against people you know it's an obvious weakness that could be could be used you know in that clamoring the morality you know, we can no longer go to war, but we could still clamor and say that we're in the right and we're the good guys and we're the ones that deserve to be in power and stuff like that. And it's just same cycle over again, right? It's these lies we tell ourselves just so we could sleep well at night, even though we're we're animals and we're, you know, it's like have things really changed too much? You know, we just complicated ourselves. We just constructed so much of this labyrinth to lie and to continue the same acts that we've continued for thousands and thousands of years, we just become more and more and more elaborate and, and more opulent and more and Byzantine and, and, and opaque in nature um, to satiate those things. You know, I'm just coming up with more excuses. But at, I think at this point, we can't even do that anymore. That's why we're turning more and more to drink and killing ourselves chemically and, and not allowing ourselves to really think and accept these truths because it's just too much to bear. And our weakness is allowing us, is, is allowing others to, or, or allowing self-destruction, but not in a good way, right? And in a way to numb oneself. Like now that we don't have God, we have drink we have drugs to run away and to satiate and to have those feelings that escape oneself from from the world from this bitter world that you know that we live in so um it's a very interesting aphorism i do definitely i, I love i love this book so much <laughs> so that'll be all for today um i hope you guys have a great day hope you guys make some gains hope you guys get some reading you know reading is good for you um and love you all. Till next time. Peace.